Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Second Star to the Left. I'm Michelle, and this is my daughter, Billy. Hi. And here's where we'll share board game reviews, ramblings, and a few wrong turns along the scenic route. Today we're going to wrap up February, and even though most of that month was spent wrapping up rolling into the new year, which somehow took two months. One and a half months. One and a half. We did manage to play some games that weren't roll and write games. In fact, we played 55 plays of 25 games, and 12 of those were new to us. So it's kind of a mix of BGA games and in-person games. So before we start talking about the non roll and rights, was there a favorite new to you roll and rights? So, you know, not Castle Party that you played during Rolling into the New Year? No. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say walk and roll. Again, the roll and right. Ignore that... the weird cut. Uh, the roll and write that I thought would lead you to bigger and more crunchy roll and writes that just didn't, but you still liked it. I loved <laughs> so, it. It was so, really fun. So it was fun. I think of the new roll and writes that I tried that we bought just for rolling into the new year. Um, Joan of Arc might be up there. And definitely my Skulls of Sedlec Dig and Write, which was just a button shy game of the month club. <laughs> card it's really just a postcard to go along with skulls of sedlek those are probably my two favorite new ones that we brought in but aside from roll and rights we did actually play games last month and our goal throughout the year is to always average at least one play a day so it means by the end of the year we need to have 365 to meet that goal which isn't bad and since we got 55 plays in january we're way ahead of the game. Do you think Dungeons and Dragons counts as a real roll and write? No. Why? Because it's an RPG. What do you do in it? You are roll you... and you write things on your sheet. But are you necessarily all sharing the same role? Yes. When one person gets hurt, everyone has to deal with it. Yeah, it's not the same. No, it's the same. No, it's not. I'm not no, it's, you... the, it's technically the same. If you want to make an RPG video... You can make an RPG video, Yo, you know. but you are not going to scam RPGs into the roll and write. <laughs> it's not roll and write month. I can talk about whatever I want. <laughs> we'll see. I know that Billy is talking about possibly doing some RPG reviews on Patreon. So if you have any inclination or you are able and want to support the Patreon, all that information will be down below. The one game that I have played the most this month, and that's both in person and and on BGA, is this tiny little charmer, <laughs> sea salt and paper. That was really fun. I just have a constant stream of these games going on BGA. And then I managed to teach Billy in person. This is just such a cute, quick, clever little card game of optimizing a hand before someone else can and using those powers to your advantage on the cards. That sounds kind of broad, but basically you're looking to either collect sets of cards to give you more points or pairs of cards that give you the power to take another turn or reshuffle the discard deck so that you can choose other cards to get more points. And you have to do it before someone else calls last chance. Timing when you call last chance is important because maybe you just hit that threshold. You just have seven points. But if you call it and someone else has eight or can get eight or nine on that turn, then you're still not going to score your hand. So you have to kind of watch what everyone else is playing and try and time it just right. Plus the art on these cards, it's origami and it is gorgeous. This one's super fun. And if anybody wants to play it on BGA, just, you know, send me an invite. <laughs> you liked this one? I did. Have you played this on BGA with I me? I have or not. Just I think it might be a little bit easier on BGA because you don't have to remember any of the cards as you get familiar with them. But we've... I'm good at not remembering things. <laughs> but we've played enough now that I know what all the cards do, so I wouldn't have to keep checking. So I think learning this one was a really good combination of 
playing in person and playing on BGA to get used to all the cards and what they do and what your best strategy might be. Although I don't win, which is a common theme amongst these games we're going to talk about, I really, really enjoy this one. Did you say what BGA is yet this video? Thank you for reminding me. BGA stands for Board Game Arena, where you can play board games with people online, including us. Yay! <laughs> Another small game that we got and played this month is Oh My Brain from 25th Century Games. And this one's just a really simple card game of trying to play the higher card. This is a really easy one to just get to the table and play. But the art on this makes me so happy. Mm. The fact that marshmallows are something that <laughs> then pops up on the cards so when you're trying to play. I love that you're just sitting around a campfire roasting marshmallows. And Billy thinks that the little marshmallow die is a brain because it's pink. It's pink and all the brains are square and it's square. So, I mean. But you're just basically trying to keep your brains. Mm. <laughs> but the art is so adorable. Little tiny mice and bats. and It's so cute. It is just really cute, really quick game. Work's been a little key lately, so being able to come home and pick up a game like Sea Salt and Paper or Oh My Brain and just sit down and play that has been the way that we've been able to play as many games as we have in February. Because if I was trying to sit down to some of our bigger games, yeah, no. it might not happen to this month. <laughs> N- not this month. So or last month, I guess, because it's March now, isn't it? Mar- yeah, but so we're really enjoying kind of lighter games that are just you know, quick and fun. And Oh My Brain is a super fun little card game. The next new to us game that we played was Marvel Remix, which was provided to us by WizKids. We got this one when we went to PAX. And this is basically Fantasy Realms, but Marvel. Only I really liked this one because you had to have both heroes and a villain in your hand by Yeah, the that's end. how you tell a story. Because that's how you tell a story. And some of the heroes can... Um, transform according to their superhero stories because of powers on the card so you you had like like bruce banner can be the hulk if yeah yeah yeah. i somehow found the scoring easier and it's not that much different so i'm not (laughs) i'm not sure why i found it easier i just like this one i think that probably fantasy realms is still my favorite of the two i don't know i think i think i might like marvel remix better i think we haven't played it enough yet to be certain but i think it could potentially be the favorite right it's the, it's definitely it's it's a little bit more than a retheming there's a few different mechanics in here that change it up a little bit it felt easier to learn and easier to score that could just be you caught me on a good day they're really very similar i will say that if i was going to pick a game of this style it might be featherlight <laughs> no I mean, I love Feather, like, don't get me wrong. You know, watercolor job is amazing. I like that shared hand in the middle in but, Feather, like. I mean, that's a pretty fun mechanic, but I like the, the thematics of building a story or building a realm. Yeah, I guess. Like, we like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, Feather, like, isn't quite the same. It's just kind of the same genre genre yeah but yeah i think it would be a hard call we'd have to play this one a little bit more before before we decided between this and fantasy realms it's another quick card game that we can just pick up set up and play even on a day when we just really want to relax with a game instead of really concentrate and obviously (laughs) not a lot of strategy for me but a lot of people do use strategy to win this game i do i'm just tired (laughs) I also played two new games that Billy didn't play. One was on BGA, and that was Applejack, which I got to play a bunch of and absolutely loved. And it's a pattern-building, set-collection, tile-placement game by Uwe Rosenberg that's set in an apple orchard with bees. It's charming, and it's lovely, and I wish that I could get my hands on a physical copy. But until it's more readily available, I've been able to play it a little bit on BGA, and that has been just amazing and the other one that i've been playing kind of non-stop is numsters <laughs> which is a button shy game about number monsters yeah i came up to film today and instead of you said you were ready but instead you were just playing numsters i was playing numsters again this is a solo game from button shy <laughs> from button shy where you have I mean, in the directions, it says you can keep them all in your hand and work from the top of a deck of eight. 
but I have a little bit of trouble doing that. So it says another option is that you can lay them on the table, which is how I play. But you have a row or a stack of number monsters and they have to feed and you have to get the number eight in the center of the two monsters that want to feed. Each little card has special powers. Part of this is definitely luck. It's like any card game, solitaire game, where you, you got to hope that you get the best card off the top of the deck. But then it's also using your assets and your powers to the best of your ability and kind of planning for the future. I have played a ton of this game. In fact, we are doing a soloish of this game and we are doing a soloish of Naturopolis, which I got just a few days ago and I've already played about 10 times. So. <laughs> I feel like this whole game was made on the old joke. Um, why was six afraid of seven? Yeah, because seven, eight, nine. It is. It's in the directions. Is, it's is that. Very, very nice. And eight is very scary. But I think then seven should have been scary. Right, right. We'll let that part slide. <laughs> but we are going to do a soloish on Numsters. We're going to do a soloish on Naturopolis. And we have two other big button shine <laughs> videos coming up as well. The last one that we're going to talk about that's new to us is... Boop. Boop. Which I think you are legally required to say in that way. Boop. 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 I love Boop. this silly little cat game. I cannot win this silly little cat game. Um, turning kittens into cats and bouncing around on the bed. It is an abstract game with adorable kittens where the box turns into a bed complete with a, a quilted padded cover to go on top of the box so that your cats can hop around on your quilt. Billy beats me all the time. <laughs> And when you do win, you don't know you won. You have to be told, oh, hey, look, you won. Oh, yeah, when I win, it's by accident. There are many times where I'm like, take that. And I put my kitten on the board and don't realize that I just shot the kittens all off the edge of the bed. <laughs> I seem to have some spatial problems <laughs> with this game. But I love this game. I love that it says it takes 20 minutes to play. I'm pretty sure that a lot of our games end under that because... We're playing it like speed chess. Yes. <laughs> we should have a shot clock. I'm so glad that we snagged a copy of this when we did. I passed on it at PAX and then because realized... You were a fool. Then I realized that was probably a mistake. So I quick got us a copy and I we have played a lot of this. And I love Boop. Now this is on BGA in beta too, so you can play it online, which I nice. played a lot today. Nice. Thanks, Anna. We were pretty good this month as far as our resolutions, not to buy as many games until we play some unplayed games. We are working on that. We did buy that one uh, flicking game though. Catacombs. Catacombs. Little flicky game called Catacombs. It's not here yet. We did have two Kickstarters show up. Uh, Rolling Heights got here and Maglev Metro with all of the maps including one that looks like the monorail at disney including a little castle in the middle and a theme park i cannot wait to play both of those games so you'll hear more about them once we get them to the table we've been better about kickstarter i don't, think I, I don't think i personally backed anything uh all month i went i backed one you did <laughs> i did i backed blueprints of mad king ludwig oh because yeah, that's it, fair it was the yeah. roll and write version of that yeah and we don't have castles of mad king ludwig we have between two castles but we do not have the original and this looks like the perfect way for us to get into that game and obviously we like roll and rights we do i know for a fact that we are going to be backing <laughs> to Button Shy has a campaign coming, I think, next week. One is called River Wild, and the other is called Ancient Realms, and they are both solo games, and they're both by Stephen Aramini, and if that name sounds familiar, it's because he was one of the co-designers of Sprawlopolis. Ooh. So we already know we like the things that he creates. Plus, River Wild is this very bright, colorful game of falling of spring and a river coming down the mountain, and you're trying to place your cards so that the river is lined up to create little valleys where you match up wildlife to score points. So that you sounds have to, lovely. It really is. It's very bright and very vibrant, very spring-like game. Uh, we can't wait. We're going to try it out for you and let you know in another video. I told you we were going to be talking about Button Shy a lot. And the other one is Ancient Realms, which is an 18-card civilization building game. I'm very excited right. about You that just one. had me right there. <laughs> uh, it looks beautiful, and so we're really looking forward to that. Plus, if you can get both of them at the same time, then you get a little break on them. 
So, of course, we're going to do that. We will be talking more about them soon in another video, as well as some of the Button Shy games that we've been playing. We did two Button Shy videos back like a year ago. Mm-hmm. We did a solo games video and we did um, a where should you start? Do you? So we're going to do a button shy, but wait, there's more <laughs> video where we talk about some of the games we've gotten since then. We cannot include them all because that would be a really long video. Because you have a million. So we'll go through and we are going to do another solo button shy video where we talk about some of the new solo games that we got. So we'll probably talk about these in there as well. Let us know down below what you got played in February. It was a short month. Did you get a lot of games in? I'm actually surprised that we got 55 plays in this month. With how crazy it's been? Yeah, it's been crazy. So thank you for watching. If you like what you see. Or if you'd like to keep watching until we get one right. Might be a while. Please like, subscribe, and share. As always, open tables, open minds, and play yourselves. Bye! going now. Is it going or did I stop it again? This is a good face. <laughs> it's going. <laughs> it's cold up here. And you just have a row of number monsters. From Button Shy. I already said Button Shy. You didn't say I did say Button Shy. You didn't say Button Shy. I did. I Check the tape. I said it twice. Check the tape. Okay. I'm not doing it again because I know I said it. Check the tape. This is a solo game. From Button Shy. From Button Shy.